Are you looking for security architect interview questions and cloud security architect interview questions? If so, this video is for you. This video is a member of our series on security architect interview questions. In this video, we'll cover five questions and the kind of answers that will get you hired on your next security architect interview or cloud security architect interview. I'm going to go over the first question now, and this is a question we commonly ask people. How do you secure network architectures and infrastructure? Now, this is a test of someone's knowledge of network security. So I'm looking for the person to say, well, we have a lot of security things we can do on the network, specifically segmentation and micro segmentation. So we can segment our users with various VLANs, for example, and we can make it that the VLANs can't even speak to each other if that's actually desired. So that's one way we can segment our environments. We can also segment our environments with access lists and other things to keep various subnets from speaking to each other. Another thing we can do in networking is something called admission control. We can make sure that before people even access the network, they're authorized to be there. So we can create policies on our switch. 802.1x is an example. We have other examples for wireless where we have, it, uh, we have identified MAC addresses, for example, that are allowed to plug in to the network. And if a user with the incorrect MAC address tries to plug into the network, the switch part will be shut down and they'll be denied access to the network. Another thing that we can do with networking is something called route filtering, because if you don't have a route, you can't reach it and the router will drop the packet. So we can filter which routes are given to which parts of the network to determine which parts of the network can and can't reach certain things. In network security, we can do a lot of things called access control lists where we can limit who can speak to whom. We can do it at layer three. Um, we can do it at layer two, for example, by filtering MAC addresses. On a network, we can do quality of service to enhance our security. For example, we could prioritize mission critical traffic over other traffic. And that way, if the network or the systems were to be impacted with a worm and an overwhelming amount of traffic, the network will still prioritize the mission critical traffic and drop the excess traffic that doesn't conform to policy, which means we can also do something called traffic policing. In order to protect our systems, we can't have too much traffic coming out the network. So if we only have a 10 gig link, we can actually police the traffic to say 10 gigs. So if there was a DDoS attack and someone tried to push 100 gigs down the link, they wouldn't be able to. Now, part of our network security is actually protecting the network access, assets, keeping them locked up from a physical security perspective. Because if anybody could touch the network, they could access the network. And from a network security perspective, we can also do a lot of encryption. We could be doing IPsec encryption, for example, uh, to protect the network. And we could also be creating uh, uh, net encryption in transit across the network with things like TLS encryption. So that's the way you could secure your network architecture and infrastructure. I might also ask the question of what role does automation play in modern security strategy? And I'm looking for an answer that's like this. Automation and semi-automation can help reduce security risk, uh, identify incidents faster, and resolve incidents faster. And I'll describe how these help uh, before and after an incident. First, we have semi-automation, and this is things like infrastructure as code, which uh, we can use to deploy our infrastructure on the public and private clouds. Now, by being able to template our infrastructure, we can do two things. We can minimize the, uh, the, the accidental mistakes that humans might make because we can have one script and that one script could do the work of say 50 admins that would be manually doing things. And by not doing things manually and doing things in a semi-automated manner, we can make sure we've got the perfect configuration and it's pushed out to everyone avoiding human error. I also want to hear something like we do things like continuous vulnerability scanning to, that can help us find weaknesses that we can address so we don't get hacked. I also want to hear that we can also have automated detection of incidents so we can find them faster. For example, the AI in our SIEM system may notice something in the logs and alert us to some form of a breach. Or an intrusion detection, so intrusion prevention system is on the network and it catches a problem and then it could potentially actually solve it. So as you can see, automation can help us in a lot of ways. We can even automate a protection strategy. For example, if someone puts uh, an object into a cloud provider 
there's object storage bucket, say an AWS S3 bucket, and they set the permissions wrong, we can kick off a function as a service to remediate it like a Lambda function to fix the permissions. So automation helps us a lot with our security strategy. Now, the next question I'm gonna ask people is related to cloud computing and the shared security model of cloud computing. I wanna make sure people really understand this because it's absolutely critical. And uh, the what kind of answer that I'm looking for is that uh, the shared security model really states that you're responsible for your things and the cloud provider's responsible for their things. And depending upon the service model you use, what the cloud provider is responsible and you're responsible for are two different things. So let's say we take the closest environment to the data center infrastructure as a service. The cloud provider manages the underlying systems, things like the networks or hypervisors, that kind of thing. But you, the customer, manage your virtual network, your virtual machines, your containers, your operating systems, your network security. So you've got a lot of control over the network, but you don't have control over the underlying systems that's managed by the providers, but you do have a lot of control over your systems. Now, by comparison, if we move to a platform as a service environment, now here the cloud provider is managing much more. They're managing the network, they're managing their hypervisors, they're managing their servers, and they're even managing their applications. And the infrastructure for their application virtualization, what are you pretty much doing? Maybe you're uploading your code and it's running or you're using one of their service. So in an environment like this, they're responsible for the majority of it. Now you manage your code and it's security. So hopefully you secured your code properly and you manage your data and you can do things like I am and control certain parts of your systems. But a lot of that infrastructure is now managed by the cloud, including the underlying servers, their operating system and their patch level. Now with software as a service, you don't have a lot because basically you're using an application that's pre-made and pre-hosted for you. So realistically speaking, in this case with software as a service, you pretty much manage your users and IAM because the software as a service provider manages all the underlying infrastructure, all their servers, all their applications and all their application patching. So the next question I might ask someone and I'll ask it for a reason and a lot of managers ask this question is what certifications do you hold and how have your certifications contributed to your expertise in security architecture? Now, this should scare you. This right here, this is a red flag, dangerous question. And there's a couple of answers that are right. So I want you to be careful how you answer this. Here's why this question matters so much. In general, no certification will ever prepare anyone for an architect role. And any architects that's been out there will completely understand this. So how you answer this is going to be very important. There are plenty of certifications out there that are like the name of the service and how to configure that that are great for admins, but for architects, it's very different. So here's the way I answered this question as an architect many years ago and how I've always answered this question and it's never gotten a bad response. So what I tell people is the CCIE was uh, one of my first networking certifications and it really gave me great fundamentals of networking and it told me what was possible in the network and that's helped me dramatically. I also tell you that I took the CISSP and it was the best intro to security I ever had. It was broad and it gave me a great background. But what really matters is the CISSP was a blueprint of things for me to learn. And I spent the next several years learning this blueprint. So it really was very helpful because it taught me what I didn't know and it gave me a framework for learning. So the key here is you need to know that a single certification will not prepare you for any job. And since this isn't a job where we configure things, that won't work either. So you want to show that that certification serves as a framework for a component of your knowledge. That's the right answer there because the managers know it's not enough for you. And the, all the other architects know it's not enough for you. So we want you to know that it's not enough for you and know that you went deeper and created more of uh, a depth of knowledge, which is what you're going to need as an architect to be able to be a strategic advisor. Now, the next question I tend to ask people and I'm hearing being asked a lot is, uh, 
How do you see artificial intelligence and machine learning impacting security architecture? And here's where I want the architect to understand both sides of the equation. So an answer that would work would be something like, well, AI can cause attacks and AI can be used to protect attacks. So let's talk about both sides of this. AI can uh, help make some attacks more dangerous. For example, AI can create phishing scams where the grammar is better and things feel more real, which uh, can increase the threat of uh, the phishing scams and the likelihood of someone actually falling victim to a phishing scam. Now, AI could potentially be used to write malicious codes, uh, to create scripts for attack, and we could potentially see things like AI beating voice authentication system, because if you get samples of someone's voice, AI can recreate a voice pretty accurately. So AI could be used to form attacks and create other weaknesses for us. But at the same time, AI can protect us. For example, we can have AI detection and mitigation of things going on, for example, that we often see in, say, next generation firewalls. AI can enhance our identity and access management with uh, AI enhanced content aware IAM, for example. AI can be constantly scanning uh, things and scanning what's coming through a firewall. And AI can augment our SIEM systems to find things and correlate logs much faster. So at the end of the day, it's kind of an arms race. AI can be used good or AI can use B from harm. And the key is we hope that our defenders are using AI better than the uh, pe people that have malicious intent that are using AI for harm. So these are five questions and the kind of answers that will get you hired on a security architect interview or a cloud security architect interview. If you'd like to become a security architect, a cloud architect, an enterprise architect, an AI architect, or any other kind of architect, please join us on a free webinar. We hold one every week. The link to sign up for this free webinar is in the description of this video. And there's also many other free things for you in the description of this video. So sign up for a free webinar. We'll talk about the architect role, whether it be a cloud architect or security architect. We'll talk about what we do. We'll talk about the skills you need and how you need to get hired. And then after that, we'll spend 60 to 90 minutes answering any questions you may have all completely free live on Zoom. So I hope to meet you on a webinar. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your technology career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I look forward to seeing you in another webinar. Take care.